If you've got scraps and you want to know how to take those, cut them into simple squares and make really effective quilts, the book I'm going to show you today explains how to do just that. Hi, I'm Kim Jamison Hurst of Chatterbox Quilts. Today I'm taking a look at a book called Quilts for Scrap Lovers by Judy Gauthier. Now, I have done reviews of some of her other books and I love her books because she explains things so well and in this book she's showing you how to take three different sizes of squares, three and a half inch, four and a half inch, and five and a half inch and make these different projects in the book. So let's take a look at what information she has to share with us. So she'll tell you at the beginning there are actually templates you can purchase from CNT Publishing that are in three and a half, four and a half, and five and a half inch sizes. But you don't have to actually purchase the templates. We can all cut those ourselves, right? Using our rotary cutter and our uh, cutting templates, cutting rulers, I should say. But she does talk about why she came up with that and why those particular sizes. So you can read about that and the thinking behind it in the beginning of the book. And then she's always really big on using a color wheel, okay? She thinks about, I mean, we have scraps in all different colors, but she does talk about looking at color wheels or getting color schemes before you start picking those scraps to make the projects because it makes for a more effective project, really, a more cohesive project. So she does talk about those and different tools that she uses um, next in the book. And you also get information about balance with your fabrics and um, making sure that you have that contrast that makes your project look so interesting as well and she shows you different examples so there's lots of photos in this book to help you make these different projects and let me show you some of these projects now i love house quilts i'll admit so she has one in here that's called house all right and each of them will show you what is the finished block size and you can see this one's five inch by seven and a half so it's not necessarily square and then she tells you the finished quilt size 15 and a half inch by 68 and then she'll go on to show you step by step how to make in this case those little houses and also the sashing she's using for this particular project but one of the things i really like about this book besides the projects is the fact that she gives you information on different sizes so you know how sometimes you'll get a pattern or a book and it only shows you how to make it in say a lap size well what if i want to make it bigger or what if I want to make it smaller? Well, she gives you information on the number of blocks you're going to need, the different rows, you know, the layout of it. And also if there's sashing, how many sashing rows you will have in there. And of course the final size for six different, six I think, yes, six different sizes. So from everything from a crib size quilt to a king size quilt. So I appreciate that information because it means I don't have to do that, uh, you know, calculation myself. So I know exactly how many blocks I will need to make and what layout I will use for them to get, you know, a different size than what she may be actually showing in the project in here. Another one I thought was interesting was the Dutchman's Puzzle. And again, you know, all scraps. Now in this particular case, you could even do some fussy cutting if you wanted to in those squares, if you've got uh, enough of a particular scrap fabric or different scraps where that would work for, or maybe even cut into your yardage, right? Not to say you couldn't go into your yardage for some of this uh, if you wanted to do that. But I think this block with our uh, quilt, I should say, would lend itself to that fussy cutting for those center parts. This one's really interesting. This is treasure box. And the, the block she's making here, again, very simple blocks, but very effective because of the fabric she's using in them. And that goes back to that, you know, color scheme thinking there again. So when she puts it together, you can see how the block is formed here. She also uses parts of this block in other quilts. Some are in this book, some are in other books. But you can see sometimes she will just use this little quarter of the block and put it together in different ways and come up with totally different looks. So that's interesting and something to be uh, to think about when you're looking at this treasure box quilt. Another one called Crown I thought was pretty cool, kind of fun. A little bit different, right? And the thing is too in the book, she'll show you different, the different projects are in different sizes. I told you she has the information about the different sizes, but even in the samples themselves, she'll show them in different sizes. So that's also interesting too to see how they would look in those different sizes. So this particular one here comes out, you know, this is what your block looks like, but it comes together with all these different little pieces. Again, not very difficult at all to do, but it makes this really effective quilt in the end. I love it when you have easy blocks to put together, not too much thinking with them, not anything really complicated, but the look is really effective, as in this particular quilt called Houndstooth, which is what it looks like, right? Looks like Houndstooth check, 
and very simple where you've got starting with a half square triangle and you are what I call snowballing the edges or stitch and flip on the edges to create this quilt. I could see this in lots of different colorways. I could also see it in kind of a rainbow effect coming down or a grad, grad, graduating colors. What am I trying to say? A gradient. There we go. A gradient going down from, say, you know, just in one color from a light to a dark, too. I think this quilt, you could do a lot of different things with this particular pattern. And then, guess what? We're back to more houses. Yay! Here, this one's row houses. And you can see in this one, that you've got different sizes of houses from bigger uh, to smaller and kind of medium as well. So different sizes of houses, really cute. This is a great scrap quilt, right? Because you don't need too much for each of these houses. So really effective as well if you're someone like me who likes a house quilt. And then Modern Anvil, another really interesting one. Um, what I thought was interesting on this particular sample is that we're not using... Uh, she doesn't use solids a lot in her patterns, right? She's going to use some pattern fabrics, which is what most of us probably have in our scrap pile or in our stash, um, if you're like me. But you can see in the background here, all of these fabrics are patterned. Okay, you might have seen them in like, say, solids in the center and then a solid white or gray or black in the background. But I like how she's using all these different fabrics. So it gives you an idea for what you may have in your stash and how you can use it in these projects. Again, there's that contrast though, okay? Always gotta have that contrast to make it effective and actually see that anvil block. Very simple to make, but really effective when you put it into a quilt. And then I like this little one here, these little snippets. Again, you don't need much of your scraps to make this particular little quilt. You do need some yardage or you could have scraps like in that previous one I showed you. Here she's going with all uh, white. So you could have all different uh, fabrics in there, but you could go with just white yardage. So whichever you wanted to do, but definitely those little scraps could be in all different kinds of colors, right? And they're gonna show up like little diamonds almost in that quilt top. The one at the back is interesting here. Um, this is called Mathematical Genius. To me, it looks like all these little crosses. Again, another great one to use your scraps because you can see how she's got just a real variety. You see the reds coming out in there for sure, but a variety of fabrics in there makes that quilt really interesting. So if you're someone who's got some scraps and you want to have some ideas for how to use them and have some really easy way to just cut them into three or four, three I should say, different sizes of squares before you put them into these projects, I would highly recommend you look at Quilts for Scrap Lovers by Judy Gauthier. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to share it with your quilting friends. And remember to subscribe and hit the bell before you go so you'll be notified the next time I release a new video. And also before you go, check out these other videos that I've included just for you. For more helpful quilting information, please go to my website at www.chatterboxquilts.com.